it's hard to predict what's going to be valuable to someone later on down the line. And I guess, especially now, it's like, okay, what are we drinking now that we could see being valuable, you know, in the future? And how do you determine which LTO or limited time know, offering? There's so is, there's, I mean, there's there's a new one every week now. I mean, we all get the press releases. So yeah. it's hard to determine what it is. It's either got to come from probably most likely a heritage distillery and it's got to have some big age statement on it because that's usually the only ones that are going to. There's a little bit of uh, the source brands right now, I think could be a good buy, a good investment to like have down the road. If Whistle Pig is a good example of a brand that was really sexy to a small crowd and they grew out and they capitalize on the their location, you know, you got to look at like what's a brand that kind of meets that same pedigree and Smoke Wagon is a really good one. You can go into pretty much any store right now where they are and you can find Smoke Wagon for about 40 bucks, like a regular small batch Smoke Wagon. In 20 years with the way that brand is going, those things could be 500 bucks, you know, for all I know. But some of their like rare and limited and special. Now special there specials, goes all the smoke wagons. You know, <laughs> I mean, but what I, th- I don't think, I think that's, they're all going that way anyway. No, I know. I mean, their bottles are going between six and 10,000, like their special bottles at like a charity auction. So you have a brand there that I think is really good. I think you also have to look for some of the, Blends of straights, things that Nancy Fraley has done. You know, Nancy Fraley yeah, is some like of those old Magnuses or special. Yeah. So if you take a look at like who created them, going back to that pedigree of like what Whistlepig did, who's the closest thing to Dave Pickerel? And I think Nancy Fraley fits that bill pretty well with like what she has put out. There's a lot of that. One of the brands that has been shocking to me too is like how good they are a barrel. Barrel does so well in competitions and everything. And they have a little a pretty interesting fan base. I think that's one that could also be like an investment brand, like especially if you collect all the batches, there's going to be some batches like batch 11, which won San Francisco. I think batch 33 from this year is in that same kind of league. Some of those batches could be like really incredible investments for down the line because they're, they do well. First release of seagrass, you know, number, your, your number seagrass, two. Yeah, yeah, seagrass would be would be up there. I mean, even for, for the modern brands, back to what Ryan was saying, it's really hard to kind of know what are you going to go ahead and put your investment in. Well, A, you've got to have the, the self-control to not open it and drink it. So that's the first part. But if you are going to go and, you know, buy the, the latest edition of Barrel or you're going to go and buy the smoke wagon batch 162, who knows if any of that it will be worth anything come three, four years later, I think it will probably have to be some pivotal moment where that brand really explodes or something has changes. To, something has to change where it, you know, rises to a, a Buffalo Trace esque type level, right? Yeah. That's the only way that I feel that it's going to happen. It's going to be hard for a lot of brands to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. 